viewer, welcome back to 54A. I'm going to do a little bowl today, um, nothing special, but I've still got quite a chunk of this maple left. So I've just marked off where I'm going to cut it on the table saw. The table saw is all set up. Um, again, the blade I've just bought up just over halfway. It will just about cut through this thickness. But it'll put a heck of a strain on it, so uh, halfway flip it over and then run it through again. So, first things first, cut that on the saw, and I'm going to take it over to the band saw and use my little circle cutting jig. And uh, should have me round blank then. Uh, when I've done the bowl, um, I'm hoping to put a bit of a pattern on it, but we'll see how it goes later on. Okay, I'm all set up and again, I must stress, my hands are nowhere near the blade, plus the fact I'm only going halfway through, so even if my hand was on the top by some stupid idea, it wouldn't get me. I've also got the sliding stop here, to keep it nice and level. There we go, that's the blank that I want. Right, over to the bandsaw. Right, band now I've got my little pin in the three inch hole, so it uh, might just skim the edge. Now again, bandsaw work, when you're using it, I only, I can't even get my finger in between the wood and the, the stop, the uh, guide there. You have it as low as you possibly can, just to clear the, the work. I've seen people and they have these guides right up here with loads of bare blades showing. And if anything happens, it's going to grab your hand. So uh, just keep this as low as you can, that's what it's there for. Let the machine stop completely before you do anything, before you move anything. There we are, lovely blank there. Excellent, nice smooth cut. Mine is a nice new blade, which does help. So, on to the lathe. Now I'll get it set up between centres and uh, get a mortise on the one end. Right, actually, I'm going to face this up first and put a tenon on this end. Then I can reverse it get it in the jaws of my chuck and then I'll put a mortise on the bot what will be the bottom of the bowl. Well first off I am going to actually put a tenon on this end, not a mortise. Then I'm going to turn it round, get it in the jaws of my chuck nice and safe and then I should put a mortise on the bottom of the bowl. The smell that comes off this maple is so nice, it's a very sweet smell and it makes me want a plate full of pancakes. Oh, I should get on with this now before I die of hunger. Right, I'm just going to put the, the shoulder on the tenon now using the skew chisel. Now I can reverse it. I'm just going to drill the uh, indent for my little logo disc with the one and one eighth inch, whatever it's called, force and a bit. That's it. <laughs> it's my age. That's 
it and I can get on with the mortise. Again using my little skew chisel. That's the mortise cut in. I'm just going to round a bit of this corner off before I uh, reverse it. Just using the round nose scraper. It's extremely sharp. I'm getting used to the um, CBN wheel now for sharpening my tools. And uh, my word, it makes a difference. hardly touching this at all um, get some beautiful shavings off this it does help to keep your tools extremely sharp that is a lovely finish on that a little bit more work and then I'm going to turn it round right I've got it all turned round now in the jaws of the chuck I'm just going to go over the, the outside edge here first with my uh, round nose scraper just get a bit of this roughness off and then I shall start hollowing it out that'll do I can always put a final finish on it later so I'm going to change the camera angle again now and start hollowing out etc etc there's a long way to go yet so I won't bore you with all this I'll uh, get a bit further in right so I'm just about as deep as I want to go and I'm just putting the final finishing scrapes now just in case there's any little ridges uh, there's one in there so I've just got to get rid of that just using the small carbide round carbide cutter for this just very gently scraping along. That's just about got rid of that now. Just going to tidy this front edge up and just shape a little bit more around the outside. going to take a little bit of the the angle of the on the bottom of this bowl here just take that off and uh, just thin it out a little bit With a bit of sand in, I think that'll do. Right, this is going to be first for me. Um, I've bought a pyrography set, uh, the Antex Fire Writer. All the brands are available. 
this is the one that uh, you make your own little wire tips for it I've been having a little go on scraps of wood and just to find out how it works how comfortable I am with it and uh, I'm going to give it a go so what I've done is just grabbed a bit of a pattern off the internet printed it out put it on some tracing paper and stuck it on the side of the bowl so if you can follow a line you should be able to trace a pattern that's the theory anyway so uh, I'm going to sort of draw that lightly onto the bowl and then try a bit of uh, pyrography now another one I bought months ago was one of these really really cheap things I think the whole kit was only about 12 quid it's like a glorified soldering iron and you screw the tips in it comes with various tips which is fine but for me um, everybody has their own preference so don't take my word as gospel I like to get my fingers a lot closer to the end and I can't with this because it gets hot the handle gets hot as well so you can't do too much work with it so it's only a cheap thing but it'll do for little bits of shading and what have you until I get used to the the fire writer so uh, don't discount these I mean, a lot of people work with these it's just that I can't really get on with it very much but uh, there's loads of tips with it there's a very fine point there for fine work there's there's all kinds of patterns that you get with them uh, so but it is only a cheap thing there are a lot better quality ones on the market but um, I thought I'd give that a go first so the, the handle gets hot this fire writer stays nice and cool I can get my fingers right near the tip within an inch of the end and it gives me a bit more control I hope <laughs> right the moment of truth um, I don't want nothing too heavy I just want a guideline to follow oh yeah yep that's just about right. If, you can, if that's picking it up, yes it is. All I've got to do now <laughs> is uh, follow those lines. There is a bit of an art to this pyrography and you've got to get the heat settings right. Um, you've got to move it as you touch basically otherwise you'll get what they call a blob, a big black mark which you probably don't really want. You want a nice fine line okay so that's something for me to have a go at now this um, the tip I've got in here at the moment is very fine for very fine line work they do give you uh, a packet of different gauge uh, I think it's chrome something steel uh, five different gauges I think there is one two three four five so you can make your own tips it's just a question of cut a inch and a half off bend it in half and pinch the end screw it into the end of the, of the uh, fire writer so I'm going to make one or two different thickness tips up so they're ready for me when if and when I need them and I'll get back to you in a bit if I haven't ruined it Well, there's the first little petal. <laughs> so the main thing is to get yourself nice and comfy. Make sure you can get at the thing first before you do anything. And just a gentle stroke as you're actually going to touch it. Um, hang on, let's get that camera down a bit. That's better for you, I think. Just a very gentle stroke as you're going to touch the wood. Keep the wood, keep it moving as you touch, if you know what I mean. And there's the outline, and then just shade it in. And that's where you can leave it in a bit longer, depending on how dark you want it. That's number two done, so uh, I'll carry on. <coughs> I'll show you what it's like when I've done a bit more. Right, nearly done the first B 
bit of this. Got the, all the outline done and most of the, sh the uh, shading in done. Just left one or two just to show you how it goes. Uh, these are just going to be filled in now. Just dip a little bit. Depends on how dark you want it. Just a very, very light touch if you want it slightly brown. If you want it really deep black, then just go a lot slower and let it burn in deeper. But uh, I'm quite pleased with this. It's a very basic design, really, but uh, it is the first one I've ever had a go at. So it's coming out quite well. Obviously, I haven't polished the bowl yet or uh, put sanding sealer on it. It's a bit daft if you're going to uh, burn into the surface. Center of this little flower, just fill that in as well. here or petals or whatever they are I haven't got it on too hot that's a good thing about this it's fully adjustable and it heats up in a matter of seconds whereas the other one you have to wait a couple of minutes for it to heat up and there's no control over the power Big one at the end here. That's it. Now what I have got to do, I'll show you in a sec. Just put that to one side. What I have got to do is the one or two lines that I've got to thicken up quite a lot uh, on the actual original design. As you can see this this line here is quite a lot thicker around the edges of the, some of the petals and that line there. So I'll just uh, put a slightly thicker wire in now and then just go over where I've gone. Just follow the lines but uh, widen them out a bit. Right, that's the first bit done, and um, as you can see, I've made things a little bit wider and made the petals stand out a bit more. Just that extra bit, little bit of shading, it really sets it off. Now, I'm really chuffed with that, uh, very pleased. All I've got to do now is reverse the pattern with the paper and put it on sort of there and take it round the bowl. It'll go sort of ooh, about a three inch gap at the back, which will do nicely. Don't want it too tight, the pattern. So I'll do the same thing all over again. And then uh, I'll take it back on the lathe, sanding sealer, 00 wire wall and polish. And I'll show you the finished article when it's and these little <laughs> I thought I'd messed up to start with there's um it's just a little inclusion in the wood there and there uh, you can see it more on the inside there's quite a quite a big one there a bit of a, a knot and uh, those two I've just mentioned they come through there and there but not to worry that's what wood's all about Anyway, my first ever go at pyrography, not bad at all, I'll see you later.
what that will do I think um, <clears throat> I'm going to take it over to the lathe give it a very fine sanding probably 600 grit and then uh, seal and polish it put my little logo disc in the bottom and that should be it so I'll see you later and there's the finished bowl my first attempt at pyrography I don't think it's come out too bad uh, in fact I'm really pleased I really enjoyed doing it I, I'm definitely going to be doing some more of this pyrography it's just the uh, same with everything practice but for a first attempt nothing too complicated I'm really pleased with that uh, finish has come out nice once you get the polish on this maple and it does show up all different colours so uh, yep I like that that's it folks just before I go uh, I've got a shout out don't do it very often um, but this guy really well worth a look believe me he's a Spanish chap gentleman and his name's Daniel Villarino I hope I've pronounced that right but take a look at his channel he does some absolutely fantastic work and he explains everything in really great detail and he also goes to the trouble of doing two videos one in Spanish and one in English that takes a lot of doing and uh, it just shows how considerate he is so I will put a link to his channel in the description below and um, have a look he's a really nice chap does some amazing stuff so that's it folks see you for the next one bye now